This is Spunky. And Snarky. And we say, welcome Welcome to to the the show. show. Well, hello and welcome back. Can you believe it's been one year since we started? And we're still dealing with COVID. Hopefully all y'all are getting your vaccine if that's what you want to do and staying safe. We're getting through this somehow. Yeah. Well, today we're looking at an oldie but goodie, one of our childhood favorites. Sailor Moon! The show was like everything. (laughs) Yeah, got some memories of this one. Yeah, because we were super into Sailor Moon. We loved fighting evil by moonlight and winning love by daylight. (laughs) So let's dive in. Today we're watching Sailor Moon, An Artful Attack from Season 1, Episode 24. Sailor Moon is a Japanese anime series based on the manga of the same name by Naoko Takeuchi. The US dub premiered on September 11, 1995 and ran on various networks through 1998, lasting for four seasons. So we're looking back on the episodes we used to watch as a kid that appeared on American television. Back in those days, anime was what we got on TV. There was no internet. And we open up with the traditional theme song. Both the Japanese and the English theme songs are pretty rockin'. They have a nice guitar riff. And the American theme song is very iconic with the fighting evil by moonlight. Which is kind of the same as the Japanese one. It's like... Miracle of Romance. They're both good. So after the theme song, we cut to Queen Beryl yelling at Zoysite. Queen Beryl's pissed because they're supposed to be collecting these crystals so that they can form them into the big crystal and take over the world. They don't really go into too much detail. And since we hadn't been watching the previous episodes, we kind of don't know what's going on. But they need some crystals. And they basically have to collect them from victims who are harvesting them in their body or something. Anyway, (laughs) Zoyza is like, see this girl. She's the next victim. I'm gonna get her or you can kill me. Zoizide, of course, was the one general of the Nigaverse who was very controversial because in America they made him a girl because he looks like a girl. He's very femme, but in the Japanese one, he's just an effeminate dude. Anyway, we see Serena and she's sitting by a lake and there's all these couples in the park and she's sad because she wants to be with Tuxedo Mask. And she's worried that they're becoming enemies because he's after these crystals too and she needs the crystals and she doesn't want to fight him because he's a hunk. But Luna's like, get it together, girl. You need to get these rainbow crystals and if he's going to be against us, you can't be with him. During their talk, Serena's friend Molly shows up and Molly in the American dub has a total Brooklyn accent. It's like, Serena, what's going on? There's an art exhibit we gotta go see. I mean, it's over. She sounds like Fran Drescher. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) So Serena runs off with Molly and of course her crescent moon wand falls out of her backpack and Luna has to catch it before it falls into the river. (laughs) Luckily she does, but she's kind of pissed about it. So Molly and Serena go to the art gallery and they're admiring some portraits that are really beautifully sketched. And Molly says that the one they're looking at is called Portrait of a Moon Princess. Then their nerdy classmate Melvin shows up and he's all like, do you want to know about the chemical elements of paint? And they're like, go away. Molly explains that if you buy one of her paintings, like all your romantic dreams will come true because they're so pretty. Serena's like, oh, I just want to plaster my walls with them. Molly comments about how the moon princess like looks like Serena and Melvin explains that Lonnie Lanai, the artist, is really shy and she doesn't come to her exhibitions. So the gang's looking around at different paintings and Serena sees a picture of a girl that resembles her with a man that kind of looks like Tuxedo Mask and she's like, "Mm, I think I've seen this man before. Meanwhile, there's a girl, like, looking at people. We don't really know what she's up to either. 
So we cut to Darian and he's walking outside of the exhibition and sees the same painting the gang was looking at earlier in the window. And he thinks to himself that the girl in the picture looks familiar and has a flashback to the girl in his dream. Darian turns to leave and bumps into Peggy Jones, the women Zoizite is targeting. Serena sees Darian with Peggy through the window and thinks that he's cheating on Ray, Sailor Mars. So she goes outside to yell at him. But while doing so, Peggy asks Serena and Darian to model for her paintings. So Serena and Darian go to Peggy's house and Serena looks through her paintings and say they look a lot like the ones at the gallery. And Peggy explains that she made up the name Lonnie Lanai when she began a new series of paintings and became more successful. While Peggy is about to draw a picture of them, Serena and Darian think about how good looking the other is but can't stand the other's personality. Mm. So while Peggy is drawing, Serena takes a peek at the sketch and loves it. She asks Peggy where she gets her inspiration from, and she says it's mostly from her dreams, and that when she draws, she tries to bring her dreams to life and make people happy. Darian makes a nasty comment about it, about her hiding herself, and Serena goes off and finds another picture and shows it to him, and she's like, you can't tell me that you don't feel anything when you look at this, and Darian looks at the picture and gasps, because it's a man and a woman, and she's giving him a locket and it looks like the star locket which Darian has had in his possession and reminds him of the princess in his dreams. So Peggy explains that it's one of her favorite paintings because it's based on a legend and it's called Till We Meet Again. After a while, Serena heads home, and as she's approaching her house, she sees Luna, who's carrying the crescent moon wand. She's like, oh my god, you found another one. She's like, no, this is the one you almost dropped in the river. She's like, you need to stop being so careless. The crescent moon wand starts to react, and Serena realizes that the Nakaverse is after another rainbow crystal. So later, Zoisite confronts Peggy and extracts a green crystal from her and then turns her into a monster. Serena calls Amy, Ray, and Lita for help and then transforms into Sailor Moon. She confronts Zoisite and the monster Vina, and she will right wrongs and triumph over evil, and that means you. Vina uses a feather from her wings to create rocks and tries to crush Sailor Moon with them. She dodges them for a while, until a big one almost crushes her, but Tuxedo Mask saves her at the last second. Zoisite runs off with the crystal, and Tuxedo Mask goes after her. Sailor Mercury, Sailor Mars, and Sailor Jupiter and Luna arrive to fight Vina. Sailor Mercury uses Mercury Bubbles Blast, and Sailor Moon decides to go after Zoisite while the scouts take on Vina. So Tuxedo Mask and Zoisite are fighting, and she throws an ice crystal at him. But Sailor Moon destroys it with her Moon Tierra magic. Sailor Moon asks Tuxedo Mask if he wants his locket back. That looks exactly like the one from the Till We Meet Again painting. He tells her to keep it and Sailor Moon then asks for the rainbow crystal he has. But he refuses. He says that he only helps the Sailor Scouts to keep the Negaverse from winning and flies off. So back to the Scouts. Sailor Jupiter uses her Jupiter Thunderbolt crash to damage Vina's wing. Sailor Moon reunites with the scouts and uses moon healing activation on Vina, which turns her back into Peggy. So later on, Serena and Darian go to the gallery and Peggy shows them her finished painting of them, which they love. She tells them that she decided to use her real name on her paintings from now on and has painted a self-portrait of herself and hung it in the gallery. Serena is really happy for her and gives her a hug. We then get a Sailor Says PSA about peer pressure and being true to yourself. And that's the end of the episode. So that's on the episode. So right after I watched this episode, I went and watched the Japanese sub of the episode, which was really interesting because I haven't watched any of Sailor Moon subtitled with the exception of the movies. Same. It was just interesting because there was less floundering Darian wasn't such an ass to Serena about being like klutz and stuff. It was interesting too because the monster that Peggy was turned into was actually based off of some Hindi god of like creation. But I thought it was a little more mature. I feel like the American version, there's a lot of like yelling. 
But I love Sailor Moon. I love the little love story. After reading the manga, I prefer the manga to the American anime. I feel like I should go back and watch the Japanese one because I feel like there's a little bit more substance. But that being said, it was fun to look back and we'll talk a little bit more about dub versus sub in the brain basement. All right, welcome to the Brain Basement. We're going to talk more about Sailor Moon, the sub versus dub, some merch and other things. We were so obsessed with Sailor Moon when we were kids. I mean, we used to get the trading cards. I used to get everything. There was like a little like anime shop at the mall. Yes. And we would go buy like everything. I wanted all the posters. I still have some posters. I had like a bag. I would get the little like dolls, everything. I loved it so much. Yeah. I remember the first time my dad took me to like Chinatown and like I was so happy because there was all this like Sailor Moon stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I was into Sailor Moon and Tenshi Muyo and that's all I wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which was kind of a fun memory for yeah, me. Yeah. I remember I found a really cute bag at this like kids shop in the mall and it was like this really cute messenger bag and it only had like Sailor Moon, Mars, and Jupiter on it. But I loved it because Sailor Jupiter was my favorite. So I was like, I have to have it. (laughs) Yeah, I was in high school and still like Sailor Moon, which was probably not cool at the time. Yeah, I was in high school too and I rocked that shit. (laughs) But I still like Sailor Moon. I mean, it just has such a nostalgic feel. Like I said, watching it sub for the first time makes me want to give it another chance. I kind of want to watch the sub now. As an anime fan, I understand that a lot of people get into anime by watching it on TV and watching it dubbed, which is fine. But in my personal opinion, the sub will always be far superior to the dubbed version. (laughs) Yeah, I've seen a lot of comments like on certain videos recently like, oh, why are you watching the dub? The dub sucks. And it's like, we didn't have the internet back then to watch the subs like... If you wanted to download an episode back in 1995, it would have taken days. Yeah. It took me a long time to get used to watching stuff subbed because when I first learned, which was funny because it was the Sailor Moon movies yeah. that I first watched subbed. And I remember like the first time I watched it, it totally like gave me a headache watching it. But after a while you get used to it and you can read sure. it fast and like still understand what's going on while reading. Yeah, you have to learn it. Speaking of the Sailor Moon movies, I wanted to talk a bit about those too because I had to import bootlegs from (laughs) Canada to get those Sailor Moon movies. This is before they finally came out years later. And I think they put them on like Cartoon Network and they got an official release. Okay, we didn't even get the internet at our house till 97. I always equate kind of Sailor Moon with getting the internet at my house because I would always look up Sailor Moon stuff. Mm -hmm. I even had like a Sailor Moon website that I made. Anyways, I ended up ordering these VHS dubs that someone had. Like, I sent them a money order to get these. And then they finally, you know, like a month or so later came to my house. And I was like so excited to watch the three Sailor Moon movies. It was the best. And I loved that ending theme song from the Sailor Moon R movie. It was like my faves. Yeah. I always liked the three o'clock fairy. <laughs> After the initial UPN run, which was only from 95, and then Sailor Moon kind of went off the air for a bit, there was this website called Save Our Sailors, SOS. And I would go on there all the time when we finally got the internet at our house. And I remember, like, you had to buy, like, Pop-Tarts because they were, like, one of the sponsors. So they're like, buy Pop-Tarts to, like, boost the sales to keep Sailor Moon on the air. I just totally remember that. And it was a good time. (laughs) That was before USA picked it up. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about, there was a Sailor Moon video game that we had. It wasn't very good. It was like a PC game. Oh my god. It was like an American Den PC game and there wasn't much to it. It was stupid. It was for like kids. It had like four different game modes. You could play dress up with the Sailor Scouts. There was some like weird like cube thing where you would like look at picture cubes. Oh, I was actually good at that though. Yeah. It was like almost like a slide puzzle like type thing. Rubik's yeah. cube type thing and I rock at slide puzzles. <laughs> like that's my I jam. Hate slider puzzles. But anyway, yeah, that Sailor Moon game was total crap. <laughs> yeah. But I played the crap out of it because I love Sailor Moon. Let's move along to the music spotlight.
All right, and welcome to the Music Spotlight, where today's topic is Moonlight Romance Songs. And first up on the list is Van Morrison with Moondance. Because it's a wonderful night for the Moondance. This is a good jazzy song. At number two, we got Leanne Rhymes with Can't Fight the Moonlight. But you know that you can't fight the moonlight, no. You can't fight it. I feel like this was a DDR song at one point. It was early 2000s, so it sounds a lot like Balamos. (laughs) It does. I was thinking that too. Anyway, moving along. Number three is one of my favorite groups again, the Beatles with Mr. Moonlight. Because I love you, Mr. Moonlight. I think this was a cover song that they did, but I still really like their version. Next at number four, we have King Harvest with Dancing in the Moonlight. Have a father's feeling warm and bright. It's such a fine and natural sight. Everybody was dancing in the moonlight. Yeah, (laughs) you gotta love that 70s yacht rock. It's the best. And then last on our list, we got Nat King Cole with my favorite version ever of Fly Me to the Moon. Because poets often use many words to say a simple thing, but it takes thought and time and rhyme to make a poem sing. Fly me to the moon. And let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. Since we're talking about anime, there's a version of the song that was used in Evangelion, but it's kind of a horrible version. (laughs) Anyway. We have two honorable mentions this week. The first one is one of my favorite songs. It's from the movie Arthur. It's Christopher Cross with Arthur's theme, parentheses, the best that you can do. Because if you get caught between the moon and New York City, I know it's it's crazy. crazy. But, but it's true. Cause when you get caught between the moon and New York City, the best that you can do is fall in love. Yeah, I don't know. This is like a jam. Story. <laughs> I like Christopher Cross. And then I decided to throw on a little classic hell with my honorable mention, which is Claire de Lune by Debus. I really like this instrumental. I'm not a big classical person, but this has a very, like, flowy sound at one point where it sounds like the waves crashing on the beach because it's pooled by the tide of the moon. It's funny because this song, like, follows me everywhere. Like, I'm into K-pop. Like, BTS used it in, like, a thing. Then I was in Korea and it was randomly playing when we were at this, like, cafe. The other day, there was, like, a thing about it, like, on Jeopardy. Jeopardy. It just pops up everywhere randomly for me. I don't know. <laughs> it gets used a lot, and it's a nice piece to just chill to. All right, that's it for Music Spotlight. If you want to check out these songs in full, you can check them out on our website. Thanks again for joining us on our no Romance and... I hope you have a good time looking back on Sailor Moon, which was one of my favorite childhood things. Me too, even though I was a teenager. Anyway, if you'd like to drop us a line, you could email us at spunkyandsnarkyshow at gmail.com. You can check out our website at spunkyandsnarkyshow.wordpress.com. You can leave us a voicemail on our Anchor page, which is anchor.fm slash spunkyandsnarkyshow. And you can find and reach out or like our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok pages. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. And I have a little special thing I put together. A little blooper reel. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Why do I feel impending doom coming on? Stay tuned for that. I'm already dying of embarrassment. Have a good one. (laughs) Bye. After the horse got spooked at the Jessica Peabody Day. All right, welcome to the Brain Basement, where today we're going to talk about... I don't know what the fuck we're going to talk about, because we didn't pick a topic. So, yeah, I've been a pretty big Pokemon theme. And, uh, the, the, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to mention, the Save by the Bell theme song is pretty uh, iconic. I was digging it as I watched it back. I forget how it goes at the moment, but... Um... Uh,
Now you say by the bell. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is? What started popped in my head was, <laughs> and you're living in a bubble and you haven't got a care. <laughs> do 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 do. Do do do. Well, then you better run for cover because we're gonna steal your air. Sorry, we love space balls in case you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's not the people. <laughs> no, I know. I don't know why that mouth. popped in my head. It's like uh, something about yeah. being late for class, but then something, you say by something, the bell. <laughs> Well, this podcast has started off great. Anyway, back I'm to the story. Cut this out. <laughs> Wait, I'll think of it in a second. Hold on. I'm trying to think. What else do we want to talk about? I tell, talk about my the dream where I married Top. <laughs> Let's not. Uh, <laughs> that one is funny. Because Taeyong saw me in my wedding dress. <laughs> I'm so mad that he was not my date at your wedding. <laughs> But whatever. <laughs> I'll probably cut that out. Moving on to number four, we got Blue Oyster Corn. Good <laughs> cook, <laughs> You know, quite for your home, <laughs> for your home cleaning needs. <laughs> Call for cord. <laughs> okay. And we got Blue Oyster. Uh, I can't talk. Oh my god. Do we need me to pause for a minute? <laughs> um, possibly. Menorah, like. Molos. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the eight candles that they stole the paint off on me. Oh my god. <laughs> and play Dreidel. I don't know. There's a whole other episode. <laughs> okay, pause so I can read. <laughs> I get my giggles out. <laughs> I can't stop it. Okay. So who are some of your favorite Muppets? Let's see. Hermit and Sweetums and Miss Piggy and Ralph and Fonzie and all of them. Fonzie? Fonzie, excuse me. <laughs> Fonzie. Hey! <laughs> you know, the fan says A all the time. Where's the little jacket? No, you mean Fonzie, the one who's got the bow tie and tells the bad jokes. Number two on our list is a jam that I like. It's Barry Man with Who put the bop and the bop, she bop, she bop. Who put the dip and the dip, 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 dip. Who put the bop and the bop, she bop, she bop. Who put the ram and the ram and ram a ding dong. Who was that man? I like to shake his hand. Who made my baby fall in love with me? Yeah. All right. I know you weren't Would ready for that. Would you like to sing the rest of the song? Just <laughs> <laughs> when my baby heard. That, yeah, I, that was an invitation. <laughs> that was rhetorical. It sounded like it. Whatever. <laughs> anyway. Whatever. I'm Unappreciated. Just, I'm just teasing. Whatever. <laughs> so number two. We got Rob Bass and DJ EZ Rock. With it takes two, baby. Um, no. It's, oh. it's take two to make a thing go round. Oh, my bad. <laughs> it's like you were doing the Marvin Gaye one. <laughs> I like that song, too. I know. Okay, my bad. There was also a note in the box that says, three of your detectives already gone. $500,000 will free them. Don't call the police. Details will follow. I like how well, you then. read it in Senior Valenti's <laughs> P.P.S. I want my money. P.P.S. Do it or your father will die. Bye bye, crocodile. 